started. I know we're starting a wee bit early, but that's how I roll. Um, <laughs> so I want to thank everyone for coming today. I'm Dr. Cameron Hernandez. I'm the Executive Director and Chief Operating Officer. For those of you who don't know me, hopefully most of you all do. Um, this is an amazing moment for Mount Sinai, Queens and the future of critical care here in our community. Very special thanks to Senator Michael Giannaris. His staff, Mount Sinai, Queens, and, and the Mount Sinai Hospital leadership, staff, and clinicians for joining us today, and for our distinguished community leaders, and for all of you who are sharing in this joyous moment. This year marks 25 years that we are Mount Sinai Queens. This is the year that we're unveiling everything <laughs> and what we're gonna be doing in the future. We started last week with the Express Care went live last week. And so now we're able to take care of a lot more patients and keep the, op the, the emergency room flowing in the right direction by being able to do the right type of care in the right place for all of our different patients. Also, we worked, uh, this is a very difficult time in medical care landscape, and our challenges of uh, delivering care in the most critical are very necessary these days. I am very, extremely proud, excuse me, of our ICU team who are here today. <laughs> You're gonna love this one. Who have been extremely agile, creative, compassionate, and devoted to the patients here at Mount Sinai Queens in our current ICU space. <laughs> the expansion of our ICU and critical care division has been years in the making, and now we finally have an end goal in sight. Earlier this year, Senator Giannaris joined us to celebrate the opening of Mount Sinai the uh, Crescent Building, another major milestone for the community here at Mount Sinai, Queens, and Mount Sinai. And today, I am proud to formally announce that it was then that uh, he graciously agreed to provide funding, an incredible generous donation of $6 million to, the, to, the, to help with the complete construction of our new ICU. This historic investment will expand critical care services to meet the growing needs of our patients and community and make a massive difference in the lives of our countless in the lives of countless individuals and families who rely on Mount Sinai Queens for their health care needs. This investment will allow us to go from an eight bedded ICU, which we've all seen, to a 21 bedded ICU with a procedural room that will be able to do procedures for our patients that are on the floors will be able to bring them up and not have to do the procedures in our very small rooms at the bedside. Because of this, because of the generosity and partnership of Senator Giannaris, Mount Sinai Queens will have the ability to perform life-saving surgeries and enhance stroke and cardiac care. So by having this ICU, we're gonna be able to do more complex things here in the backyards of our own patients and not having to have our patients go into Manhattan. There will always be times where they need to go into Manhattan for certain procedures, but the idea is to build up as much as we can so that our community can be taken care of here, again, in their own backyard. Congratulations to all of you on this incredible moment in, this in our hospital's history, and thank you to Senator Giannaris for helping us reach new heights and for gifting us the opportunity to give the absolute best health care here in Queens. Thank you so much. Next, we're going to hear from Dr. David Rich, the president of Mount Sinai Hospital. Thank you, Ken. Well, what a, what a special day this is. Uh, I want to take you back in my career a little bit. I've been at Mount Sinai, uh, I started at Mount Sinai Hospital as a resident of anesthesia 40 years ago this year. And back when I started, ICUs were a very interesting mix. Every department had their own ICU in Manhattan, and there was very little crosstalk or collaboration um, between them. And if you came out to Mount Sinai, Queens, going back around 99, 2001, 2004, back when I was chair of anesthesiology, 
you would see community doctors who would see patients in their office and then they'd come in a few hours a day and around on patients in an ICU and they were not critical care experts. Everyone was doing the best they could in, the, in those days, but starting about 10 years ago, at Mount Sinai Hospital, we created an Institute for Critical Care Medicine. Now, as you might imagine, change is not always welcomed by everyone. And imagine if you're chair of cardiac surgery, neurosurgery, cardiology, fill in the blank, keep going, and suddenly we say the ICU doesn't really report to you anymore, now it's an institute and it all comes together. That was received not so well. However, the outcome of it after going through that change management process is at Mount Sinai Hospital starting in those days, we suddenly had the capacity and the collaboration to create a rapid response team. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's like a SWAT team. It leaves the ICU, it takes care of patients on the floor, and it prevents deaths. It finds problems and it treats them before they become severe. For many years as, as an anesthesiologist, I dealt with the problems of people who are not expert putting in very um, important uh, devices called central lines, but there's a lot of capacity to do harm. And when we created the Institute for Critical Care Medicine, we were able to create a line service. And the beauty of that institute is it migrated lock, stock, and barrel here to Queens. But now, instead of six to eight patients in critical care, when we build this intensive care unit, let's fast forward about two years from now, we'll have 21 patients. That creates that scale, so that rapid response, line placement, difficult airway management makes the experience and the safety for patients here in Queens at a level you've just never seen before. And so I'm just delighted that sometimes we experiment with a new concept at Mount Sinai Hospital, but Mount Sinai Queens has, is part of us. It's been par our partner for 25 years now, and this is the next iteration. Building critical care beds raises the level of care in the community. It raises the, uh, or increases the ability for us to do much more complex surgery that we cannot do here at present. It creates the capacity for us to have that seamless integration between ORs, uh, cath lab, interventional radiology, and critical care and I couldn't be prouder of what the team has done with the limited resources available to them so far, but now, thanks to this transformational gift, the support we received from the city, and now this amazing gift that Senator Gianaris has, has created for us, we are ready to take Mount Sinai Queens to the next level. I'm proud of all of you because what you're gonna do with this is gonna pay Senator Gianaris back in decades of great pride that he was able to take a community that he loves and create a situation where care in that community can come to the next level. Uh, I apologize to poor Kat who put remarks together for me because I never follow any of them. I'm terrible about that. But the principle, the talking point, the most important talking point is Mount Sinai Queens, when so many other parts of the city are not able to provide great care, when there's poor access to care, here we are at Mount Sinai Queens increasing the level of care, and we do it in partnership with our community and with our elected officials. So please give a huge round of applause for Senator Giannaris. And Mr. Thank you, David. Uh, next, we have Dr. Nazir Mashriki, who is our director of the ICU, and she's gonna come up and tell what it means for her and the ICU to have this new ICU. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez. Thank you, Dr. Rich. Um, I'm pleased to be celebrating the future of critical care in our community alongside Senator <laughs> Michael Giannaris, Mount Sinai Queens, and Mount Sinai Hospital leadership, my fellow colleagues, and of course, my intensive care unit team. Today is a very special moment for all of us, and I couldn't be more thrilled and happy to be here to be celebrating this very day. I know we have all looked forward to this, and I can finally say that that day is here. The expansion of our ICU in the critical care division has been a motivation for us since day one. This generous investment from Senator Giannaris 
I don't want to say will be life-changing, it is life-changing. It is an investment in life, hope, and the future of our community in Queens. It will help us support our bedside complicated procedures that we perform in the tight space that we have today, such as percutaneous tracheostomies, our continuous renal replacement therapy, our complicated cardiac cath patients, our complicated stroke patients who are getting thrombectomies here now. We not only like to offer care and highly specialized support to our families and patients, but we also want to save them from the burden and stress of having to go to another community, another hospital that is unknown to them. Because of this investment, so many people that we know and love in our neighborhood and beyond who want to rely and stay in Mount Sinai, Queens, in their community, as Dr. Hernandez said, in their backyard, and be treated with the most optimal care. As Dr. Hernandez also mentioned, we will be going from eight beds to 21 beds. Before I go on any further and share my gratitude, as I don't even know to what level to say thank you, um, because enough words will not describe the excitement and thank thankfulness that we do have, I would like to call some of my IC members to the podium, please. hard work, and tireless service who will mostly be impacted by this donation. Their commitment to our patients is unwavering and will use this new unit to do what we do best, saving lives and providing hope. Thank you for gifting us the opportunity to provide the best critical care and health in our community, Queens. Without further ado, Senator Mike, Michael Giannaris. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. What a group. Um, this is an exciting day. I can tell for all of you uh, from hearing the remarks, but also for me because this is a community I was born into and grew up in and continue to now represent. Uh, interestingly enough, I wasn't born in this building because there was another hospital back in the day called Boulevard Hospital uh, over on 31st Avenue, long since gone, but that's where uh, I took my first breaths. Uh, but anyone who has uh, lived in Astoria or even Long Island City is familiar with what used to be Astoria General and went through a couple of other iterations before it uh, became, I guess, 25 years ago, Mount Sinai, Queens. Uh, we've had family members come here, we've had neighbors come here, and the one thing that's always struck me is it's just assumed out here that okay if you have something you need immediately you go to the hospital but if you have something more complicated you're crossing the river right you're getting into manhattan for all the wonderful hospitals that exist on that side but why should it be that way um, why should everything flow through the manhattan hospitals when we certainly have needs here we have a population here um, and we deserve first class health care uh, right here uh, in queens and so we always been looking for ways to help. I think we funded partially the CT scanner and some other things through the years here at the hospital. But when I was getting the tour of the building across the street, um, which I gather is going to be an outpatient cardiac um, center, among other things, I said to, uh, to Dr. Hernandez, I said, you know what would be great? A bridge that would connect the two buildings. <laughs> I'm happy to help do that because I think it would be a real like, you know, transformative thing for the hospital. And it like, creates that impression, you know, if you're driving through Manhattan and you see, it, it just gives you the, the sense of something bigger. And it's very complicated as it turns out to do that. <laughs> We're not finished thinking about it yet, but it's complicated. Uh, but I give Cam a lot of credit because he somehow diverted that energy of mine into this. <laughs> so, <laughs> He said, you know what would really be great though, and we're working on it, and we just need the last funding to get us there, is a top of the line ICU center, which will 
as so many have said, take this hospital to the next level uh, and really allow for um, the kind of care that we always wanted to have uh, right here um, in Western Queens. And so I'm very excited to, to be part of that uh, uh, process, part of that support, part of that announcement. I was told to flip this over as a surprise, but you already know uh, what's happening. So here is the... We love these big fake checks. <laughs> uh, yes, and some renderings. Uh, what it like. It's probably too small for you to see from out there, but feel free to come up afterwards and take a, a closer look. And um, you know, it's funny as we were talking about the potential bridge. Uh, he says, "Well, you know, one of the complications is you'd have to like almost sacrifice beds to have it come connect here." And I said, "But you have a whole empty floor here. I know because I was seeing like." He says, that's where the ICU is going to be. <laughs> so, so we are putting that to good use. Um, and I know we're, we're not done yet um, making Mount Sinai, Queens, an even better place to provide the care. But I'm just so happy to, to be a part of it and to take some pride in knowing that lives will be helped, hopefully lives will be saved, because um, we have a state-of-the-art ICU center coming right here to Mount Sinai, Queens. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you for the care you provide and the great work uh, that you do. My, my own dad was here just a couple months ago. Um, unfortunately, he passed, but no connection to anything that happened here. That he had great care here at the hospital, um, and so everyone who has been touched by Masonic Queens uh, is grateful that you're here and that you do the great work that you do for all of us. So thank you all very much. So one of the things that we like to do here is we like to support are the people who support us. And we have an award for you, the Community Partner Service Award that we give out every few years to someone who's made a big difference to our community. And we wanted to congratulate you with that. So, yeah. <laughs> I think it's time for, what am I missing? So again, I just want to thank everyone for this amazing moment. I want to especially thank Michael Giannaris, uh, Senator Michael Giannaris, for taking the time to put the resources that we need into the community that we have here at Mount Sinai, Queens. I want to thank each and every one of you here. It's you guys and all of y'all who make the difference day in and day out for each one of our patients. And remember, always, if we keep the patient in the middle, everything else will fall in line. And so far, everything's falling in line. Look, we're gonna get a new, new, new ICU here pretty soon. So congratulations, everyone here. Thank you, Senator Giannaris, and let's take some pictures. Yeah.